Hey, Jay, thanks for doing this. Um, I think your recruitment along with Patrick Patterson was maybe the first of the modern era for a lot of Kentucky fans with the interest level and, and all the fascination we've seen the last decade plus. Can you look back on that a little bit? Uh, how close were you to committing to Kentucky? What was your kind of takeaways from the fan base at the time and how interested they were in what you were going to do? I was coming. I was coming to Kentucky until Coach Smith left and took the Minnesota job. Uh, and that kind of left me in scramble mode because I had made my mind up uh, for months. And then that's kind of how I ended up at Florida uh, because they were the next school to call me uh, at the McDonald's game. So I kind of ended up with them and they had the momentum with Billy Donovan and winning two national championships. But, you know, this place has left an impact on me ever since I took a visit and then just through the whole recruiting process. If you're about basketball and everything that comes with it and the whole experience of college basketball, it's hard to say no to Kentucky. All right, next we'll go with Jerry Tipton with the Lexington Herald Leader. Yeah, Jay, hi. I wondered what you thought of the uh, Black Lives video uh, that the players put out on Twitter and, and the reaction to it. It seemed to have a lot of sharp reaction, pro and con. Yeah, I think the video was amazing. Um, I started to meet the players and get to know them, but I think just for them to have that message and do it together is, is a, a big statement in its own. And I think the biggest thing with everything that's going on in society and in the country is just people need to come together, just have communication, to have conversations, whether you're for it or against it. I think if you are a Kentucky fan, if you're a fan of whatever university you are and a part of it and your team has a message that they want to be heard and spoke about that. And I think you should at least have the opportunity to just come and listen to see see what they have and their concerns. And then that's how the family and the community comes together, you know, just through conversation, through communication. All right, John Wong, you're up next. Should be on the Hey, Jay, welcome to Kentucky. Uh, you Thank know you. Kentucky fan base, they're pretty passionate. Coach Calipari always says, you guys are crazy. But they claim to know more about you than you know about yourself. So as an introduction, can you tell us one or two things about yourself that maybe the fan base does not know? Oh, that's a good question. Um, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a people person. I love people. I will never not talk to anybody, not say hello, uh, not have a conversation with anybody so if anybody sees me anywhere anything you can come up say hello or whatever um, i'm not standoffish at all i love people um and then the second part is just i i really love my job and what i do uh, my opportunity to impact young men who i see a lot of myself in and things that i've been through being able to play basketball in my experiences that's probably my my favorite part about coaching and being around these kids is just being able to give them messages that i could have had or could have helped me at least when i was there all right, Larry Vaught, we'll go with you next. Jay, I was just curious, have you and Patrick stayed good friends during all this time? And exactly how much did you all talk during your recruiting? Was it as much as people like myself thought or were we way <laughs> exaggerating that? No, we've stayed in contact. Um, I've seen him uh, every now and then. He was with the Rockets and stuff. They used to have training cap in Austin. So we always connect when he came in there. We'll talk through social media every now and then. And uh, we were really close during the recruiting process, especially down the stretch. I would say we probably communicated about it every day, uh, especially down the stretch. But we were really tied together because of a lot of schools, uh, two main schools, Florida and Kentucky, when we were recruiting, when they were recruiting us. And uh, I think the biggest thing about it was just down the stretch, we communicated a lot. And when I had decided, I believed I decided before him, maybe, and I think I, after that, then I really tried to push him to come with me. Next up, we'll go with Tyler Thompson with Kentucky Sports Radio. Hey, Jay, uh, to follow up on Larry's question, have you heard from Patrick since you took the job? Yeah, I got a, a message. Uh, I think it was the same message he put under like the school's Instagram account. Uh, you know, he texted me and just said, you finally joined the right team, even though it may be years later. But uh Welcome to the family. So it's been really exciting. And I've had a bunch of messages from former players and stuff and just people tied with the university. It's been very, very, very appreciative of that. Lee K. Howard, WKYT, you're up next. 
Hey Jay, welcome to uh, to Lexington. Uh, Thank you. Wondering, one of the or two of the games you get to play this year and every year is against uh, Rick Barnes in Tennessee. Uh, wonder how much you're looking forward to that matchup and uh, playing against your coach. Uh, I'm always excited because they've done. He's done a great job at Tennessee, and uh, he is somebody that I still communicate with a lot. And I talked to him about this whole process when uh, you know deciding to what I was going to do and coming to Kentucky and stuff like that. So he helped me tremendously here recently. And he's just somebody I know I can always call and he'll always pick up the phone and, you know, playing against him and his teams, you know what they're going to bring. So I'm excited about just that competition. A lot of people on staff were on staff at Texas with me. So that's exciting to see them as well. All right, next up, we've got Dick Gabriel, a big blue insider. Hey coach, uh, good morning. You good talked morning about the fact that you were on your way here and then things changed. Tell me a little bit about being recruited by John Calipari to take this job because it's not exactly a full-time coaching job, but it looks like you're going to be pretty busy. Yeah, yeah. And it was, I mean, this place recruits itself. You know what I mean? If you are, you know, passionate and wanting to be at the highest level there is in basketball, especially college basketball, I mean, it's hard to say no to Kentucky in general, no matter if it's as a recruit or coming back as um, uh, any staff position. So, you know, and just talking to Coach Calipari, he's someone I've followed forever. Uh, and I know everything he's about. And he's been a family friend for a while with him and my dad. So, you know, a lot of the stuff he preaches about and coaches and is how I was raised through my dad. You know, he's a truth teller. He's going to tell you the truth and he's going to try to get the most out of you. So he's somebody I knew that I would all, like automatically connect with. Keith Taylor, Kentucky Today. Yeah, you got the next question. Jay, I was wondering, uh, what is your recruiting philosophy uh, when you go on the recruiting trail? Uh, my philosophy and, you know, the biggest thing is just building relationships with the recruit, his family, and the people around him. Because uh, that's the, the, the main thing, because most of the people that you're able to recruit here at Kentucky are going to be high level, high level players and be able to go anywhere in the country. So you have to be able to get them to trust you and understand that when they come here, that there will be somebody and the staff will have their back and that will be able to push them, but also be able to be there to listen to them and talk to them and let them know that, you know, we're here to help you completely as a whole person, not just as a basketball player. And I think the biggest thing here that is, uh, a little bit different than everywhere else is most of the kids want to be NBA players. And this is the closest experience to being that. So, you know, I think that's one of the advantages here, especially in the recruiting process is that you're getting, you're getting ahead of the curve here with what you're going to experience at the pro level and at the NBA. We're going to circle back around to John Hale with Courier Journal. Jay, you just kind of had a, a big head to head battle with Kentucky on the recruiting trail with, with Greg Brown when you were at Texas. Um, yep. it, it, at least the perception was maybe those were the two finalists. What was it like going against Kentucky during that process? Uh, and how does that maybe affect what you thought about the job when you took it? Uh, well, you know, when you're going against Kentucky in a recruiting process, uh, this happened a couple of times to me, uh, at least on my end and where I was at Texas, you have to kind of draw a different contrast. You know, you can't sell a lot of the things that Kentucky has, uh, you know, being at Texas, you're able to sell some of them. So it's kind of like I stated earlier, you know, a big part of what I was trying to sell is just the relationship piece with me and Coach Smart, who was my boss back then. Um, just tying to that uh, with guys like Greg or, even like a, you know, like a Miles Turner or Jared Allen or people like that, you kind of have to tie that part into it. Because if you go head to head straight up, it is almost impossible to win. All right, Jerry Tipton, we're going back to you. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. There you go, Jerry. There, Jerry, you're muted for that part of that. Go ahead. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, one other thing about the video that the players put out, I'm wondering, uh, some people were saying, you know, and it's common, keep politics out of sports. I wonder what you think about that sort of thought. And one of the responders said uh, it could hurt recruiting, the negativity that was directed at the players. What, how much of a concern is that? Um, you know, it's not, it's not much a concern on, on my part. Uh, I think for the players, it's their message and what they wanted to put out. So our job as a staff is to support them and educate them. Um, and I think the message 
of what they were saying, uh, I really, in my opinion, you know, at least I think a lot, a bit of it really is not as political um, as it is being received. You know, I'm just think they're talking more so about themselves and their experiences and people that look like them. Uh, so I think that's a big part of it. And in the recruiting part, I, th I mean, it, it kind of goes both ways because as a university, you know, most of the kids on the team and most of the student athletes are athletes of color. Um, and so those kids are watching to see what each university is doing and how they are responding to what's going on. And it is a big thing that is out in the media eye right now. And I think you just have to be educated in recruiting kids and telling them the lay of the land and what's around them and being honest with them and letting them know that, you know, no matter what, we are here to support you and protect you. And that is not the opinion of everybody who's associated with the program or even with the state of Kentucky or anything. It's just, you know, you're going to have people who have their opinion. We're going to Austin Miller next and then John Wong will come back to you. Jay, with all the basketball camps being canceled this summer, how has that affected your ability to scout some of these guys? Because we've seen over the past decade or so, a lot of late bloomers come out from these mm -hmm. camps and become big level guys that schools like Kentucky like to go after. So what kind of difficulties are, have you had so far this summer? Uh, the biggest thing is just it's completely different than anything you're experiencing. Most college coaches are creatures of habit. So a lot of college coaches love to see people in person. Uh, it's good. It's, that's the best way to get a feel of like actual size and height. And then I, actually, it's also a good feel to see how the player feels about you because you can tell, you know, if they're looking over at you or if the family's waving at you and stuff like that. So that's a big part of it. But a lot of the stuff is being streamed online. Um, so that's another good glimpse of, of watching that. And then just having a, a network of people that you trust, being able to call them and kind of ask them, you know, what do you really think of this guy? How good is he really? You know, what was he like in high school? How does high school year go? You know, can I talk to his high school coach? Can I get film from high school, stats, stuff like that? So you just have to do a little more digging than you usually do. Um, but it's, it's been pretty good. All right, John Wong, going back to you. Jay, you're not only knowledgeable, but you're also very well respected in recruiting circles. What is the one big miss? perception about the Kentucky program that you're going to have to dispel as you're going around convincing these guys to come here? I think the biggest thing, I don't think it's anything you really have to dispel uh, with the program. I mean, they had the number one recruiting class in the country last year. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty hard to say that, you know, things aren't going as well. But I think the biggest thing is just you have a a shift and I think the big shift is just finding ways to use and continue to use social media. I think that's the biggest presence right now. And I think other schools who Kentucky usually compete against are, have done a good job of that as well. So I think just kind of figuring out how we can use that in a better way, enhance that. Uh, and I think also, I think a lot of recruiting is going to change here in the next couple of years with some of the rules and stuff passing in the NCAA. So it'll be a whole different landscape here probably this time next year. All right, Larry Vaughts, you got the next question? Yeah, Jay, I was just wondering, with the refreshment that Kentucky's got coming in this year, mm -hmm. I assume you probably saw a lot of them play during the recruiting process. And I'll just wonder what you, you think of the class and some of those guys. I mean, I think the the guards in the backcourt with BJ and Terrence, with Devin, I, I think that's a – I couldn't – I can't imagine of a better trio of freshmen than that three right there. So I'm really excited about the opportunity to just be around them and get to work with them and help them grow. Um, so I, I know that. And then Isaiah, uh, someone who who is just continuing to go back, get better, he's going in the right direction. Um, you know, this is just outside looking in. I haven't been able to be in the gym with them yet. Um, so, you know, I'm excited about that. And then you have someone like Cam who, you know, is somebody who I think will develop as well to be a really good player. He's got all that athletic traits and everything and the size and the, the, the mentality and everything. So I think this is, this is a really good class. I think it starts in all college basketball. You're only as good as your guard. So those three guards are pretty good. So that's always a good feeling. Guys, we have about four more questions in the queue. Just a reminder, if you are new to this and you do have a question while we still got a few minutes left, uh, you click on the participants tab at the bottom and there'll be a raise hands feature. Uh, Lee K. Howard, we're going to go back to you. Go ahead. Yeah, Jerry, uh, 
obviously one of the guys you're replacing is Kenny Payne and, and Cal's getting up there in age as he likes to joke about you being a younger guy. How, how are you able to kind of identify and uh, with those, with those players in a different way than maybe the older guys on the coaching staff can? Well, I, I think they've done a good job of, of building a relationship with the players, even with the age. And I know that's a big thing, you know, just, just how, hearing how people talk about Coach Payne is what he was really good at. And I feel like that's something I'm really good at. And it's kind of like I was saying earlier with me playing at a similar level. Kentucky's a different level than a lot of places, but playing at a similar level, being highly recruited, being a McDonald's All-American, understanding some of the pressures that come with that stuff, uh, playing professionally, being in NBA training camps and growing up in NBA locker rooms and being around that experience. It's, it's kind of a, a good perspective that I can give them of, hey, I know what you're going through. I know what you're thinking right now. You know, let this go, let that go, do this, think about that. So I think that's the bigger thing is that I'm still not too far removed from playing and, and being closer to where they were. Um, so that's something that I think I have that I can bring to the program. All right, we'll go to Dick Gabriel and then John Hale will circle back to you. Yeah, you referred to your dad a couple of times here, and most of us older guys on the beat know his story of being a great athlete and everything, ups and downs, personally, away from the sport. But what he went through, how did that help mold you into the person and the coach and the professional that you are? Uh, it's molded. He's molded me completely. I mean, every lesson he has given me um, when you're uh, younger and you're going through it, you know, and he's in the gym yelling at you and stuff like that. You don't really appreciate it then, but you kind of understand it as you get older and become a father and stuff, what he was doing. So I'm very appreciative of everything he's done for me. And, he, you know, the biggest thing he's given me is just the, that nothing is free. You have to work for everything. And, you know, if you want something done, you can do it yourself. You know, so that is the biggest thing I've taken from him is just watching him get up at five o'clock every morning um, as long as I can remember and not coming home till nine o'clock. And he's just out working and helping people and trying to get people to be better people. Um, so that's one thing I've really taken away from him is just a, a tremendous work ethic. All right, we've got John Hale. And then if I don't see any more questions in the queue, we'll end off with Jerry. Go ahead, John. AJ, did, did Coach Cal recruit you at all out of high school? And just how has that relationship kind of developed over the years? No, he didn't recruit me at all. Uh, I had one conversation with him when I was transferring uh, out of uh, Florida, but he didn't recruit me overall. But um, growing up, my dad would always work his – he had like a fantasy camp when he was at Memphis where he had people come in. So we would always go up for that. And then back then they would come and pay, play Rice uh, back when there. I think it was Conference USA, if I'm not mistaken. We would always go to practice and stuff the day before. So it's just kind of, you know, going, you know, my relationship with him is through other people a lot. You know, Dewan Wagner was somebody who my dad drafted uh, when he was in, in Cleveland. So, you know, going through that and just little things like that through other people has been uh, the bulk of our relationship. And Jerry, you got the last question. Okay, I think I'm on. Uh, Jay, what uh, what your title, if I one of your titles is recruiting coordinator, right? And I'm wondering what that means exactly. What's that dynamic like that uh, I think people would assume the recruiting coordinator, the court coordinator means improvement, and yet Kentucky's been, you know, right at the top annually. Right. So right. How, how does that dynamic play on your mind? Uh, well, for me, it's just a way to help streamline everything with the staff. You know, I understand by being an assistant coach before, you know, how hard it is to recruit, take care of the players on campus, get ready for games, scouting reports and stuff like that. So at least my my job and how I see it is kind of just to help streamline everything. So whatever, if it's schedules or how we need to communicate with recruits, what games we need to go see, who the coach needs to be talking to, to kind of just manage all that um, for the staff and everything so they can take a little bit off their plate so they can focus a little bit, you know, on the guys. Cause you know, your recruiting is only going to be as good as your team is. So if you're, you know, winning SEC championships, playing for final fours and recruiting is going to be going pretty good. And it's like you said, like I, they had the number one recruiting class in the country last year. So, you know, I'm not trying to come in here 
and reinvent the wheel or anything like that. But if I can come in here and help streamline stuff, and let it go more efficient, and then hopefully enhance some stuff over time as I, I get my feet under me, then I think it'll go pretty good.